The high campus wall was scaled by the gunmen, the entry point for their attack. Within minutes, pools of blood spilled from the students who'd come here this morning to learn and from their elders who'd come here to teach. The spent bullet cases, but not simply that. There were suicide bomb vests as well. Police Chief Syed Wazir said, we killed all four militants, but two of their suicide vests were not defused, so we called in the bomb squad to deal with them. From Pakistan to Paris, the security forces can only play catch-up in these situations. Under the cloak of the winter morning fog, they came, armed with Kalashnikovs, and they slaughtered four gunmen, shooting students and staff. At least one eyewitness said they were killed execution style, with a single bullet through the head. There was so much panic and fear that a friend of mine jumped from the university building. The building is very high, yet he jumped from it because he was so scared. We saw the militants chanting, Allah is great. It would take the army around six hours to get the situation under control across the campus. Bachakan University's crest proclaims peace, knowledge, unity. A university preparing itself for a poetry festival, now facing funerals and for scores of people, prolonged and painful recovery from bullet wounds. We heard firing from the back of the campus. We thought maybe some people were fighting. Then the firing increased. Then we said, get into the rooms, don't go out. Then the security forces came. They showed great bravery. The army soldiers also showed great bravery. Authorities in the area say 19 people were killed by four gunmen. But that is the latest figure and could yet rise considerably. Today's attack is just 20 miles from Peshawar, where 132 schoolchildren were murdered in a Taliban massacre just 14 months ago. One of the commanders responsible for that massacre said his men carried out today's attack. But a senior Taliban spokesman later denied that, saying the university massacre was un-Islamic. Whoever did it, it leaves Pakistan's leaders saying, well, frankly, saying just what European leaders say on these bloody occasions. We should not give the impression to anyone that Pakistan is hostage to terrorists or that their attack can help them to stop the daily life of Pakistan. If we should behave like this, the act will give courage to them. The terrorists will take this as their victory. Quite clearly, though, Pakistan's often ambiguous relationship with the various Taliban groups at home and in neighboring Afghanistan continues to destabilize and often brutally end the lives of the innocent. Jonathan Miller, Channel 4 News, Pakistan.